Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and welcome back. If you like uh, our content, please put a like on the bottom of the video. And if you like the other content, please subscribe and you'll be able to see something new every day. So let's have a look at what I've got here. I'm gonna have a look at this great wall hobby. It's a bit of a tongue twister. T33A shooting star. Now this is a trainer jet and they were first, um, I think I like designed these just after Second World War, 1948, something like that. And then they became quite a heavily used uh, trainer all around the world. I think up to 30 countries were using these uh, all the way through the 50s. And then it started being phased out in the 60s in the US, but some countries were using them all the way, I think it was Bolivia, up to 2017. These were also used, even though it was a trainer, they were used in some combat situations and they were used by the Cuban um, Air Force in the Bay of Pigs invasion. So apart from that, that's a little bit of history. Let's have a look at the box cover. Now, I always like looking at the box art because that gives you a real impression of what this model's gonna look like. Really nice box art they do too. A great war hobby. Now I think this uh, kit dates to 2016. So it's a reasonably new tooling and I think it's quite an interesting aircraft. It's quite a, uh, I guess, a change from the very common uh, prop driven aircraft of World War II and then they started getting into the Sabres and they just look, looked like a aircraft built around a big cigar, which was the engine. And this has got a little bit more organics to it. And the wingtip type tanks is quite interesting. All right, let's open up and see what they give us. All right, so as we open up, all right, we've got a bunch of gray parts. Gray is one of my favorite colors for plastic because it gives you a nice base color and you can quite easily see uh, blemishes or such and hence why a lot of primers are in grey colour anyway. So that's a good start. And we've got quite a few parts here. We've got uh, a big sheet of decals that's probably going to cover quite a few different versions. And then we've got some clear parts there as well. Okay, let me put this aside and we'll start going through each sprue at a time. So for the rustling, I'm just going to be opening these up. Right, so this is the fuselage components. We've got the uh, cockpit tub right here. And then we've got the undercarriage. I'll call this a module because with some of the more modern type uh, tooling, it's actually structural as well. You'll see the locating marks, it's quite large. And that really helps because of kits uh, past, it used to be, everything used to be hanging off quite precariously off lower parts of panels. And when you squeeze them, they wouldn't have any structure at all. So you can see how this is actually going to be holding this nice, firm and true. Okay, there's gonna be quite a few parts here that I don't recognize. And we'll see all that sort of detail when I go through the manual. There's a big block here, which is unusual. It's a very solid block. We'll find out what that's about. Then we've got some undercarriage well. That'll be for the front undercarriage. You see how clean the detail is here as well. I'm gonna zoom in and I'll show you all the um, uh, undercarriage bay detail. There's something that is normally quite bland in some brands. Let's just zoom that and focus it. Have I got it right? No, that's better. Right, let me just move this around. So you see all the wire detail just here, little cable. And you bring those out quite easily with a bit of dry brushing. And if you want to add some more, that'll be quite easy as well. You can see the, uh, all the sort of rivet and ribbing detail. Uh, then also with the doors, you see the, the pressed sections for the reinforcing components as well. It's really nice. Okay, and then of course, let's have a closer look at some of the panel detail and the really fine etched panel lines. Okay, that's something that we really look forward to. You can see very fine rivet detail. If I can get just the right reflections, they're really nice and subtle. See how the, uh, along the wing there, got the fillets as well, nicely subtle. Then up to the nose, and then you got the opening here for the canopy. So all these parts are super nice, super clean, no flash at all. Very impressive. Okay, so that's first sprue. Let's go to second sprue. Okay, so it's quite large as well. This is going to have all the wings. So there's a couple of sprue in here. Okay, so we've got that separate part. It's going to have the wingtip tanks. 
and then here we've got the bulk of the wings okay so it's nice that the wings are all molded in a single piece here okay they're not two parts which makes the alignment quite difficult we've got the undercarriage cutouts here you'll see that that module that i was showing before that will sit on the inside give it quite a bit of strength got a really nice panel detail too you've got the uh the rear stabilizers and then we've got detail for the cockpit or the instrument panels they're sort of open bezels and we'll see on the other side how we do have some ribbing detail here as well which appears to be open flap detail which is nice you'll see that over here as well all right let me zoom in on that and you'll get a better look okay so you can see that molded in okay so you probably won't see that if you close the flaps but in a parking mode i'm assuming that it would have its flaps open and hence why they've bothered to do this sort of detail you can see there as well really nice something that you would expect to be like a photo sheet that's already molded in nice and sharp okay over here we've got uh, a little horizontal stabilizer you just see the really fine panel detail and rivets coming through on that Come on again and then this is the back side of the wing and then i'll flip this over and we'll start looking at the details of the instrument panels so there's the instrument panel there and you'll see how it's open bezel i think that's a really nice touch now i'm assuming that this is the back of it and your decal will be sitting here so that sandwiches and it'll give that super uh uh, depth and I'm guessing I wouldn't imagine it'll give you clear parts for lenses or the bezels but that's something you could quite easily replicate with something like crystal clear or uh, other window uh, making uh, material okay so we've got another panel here and then you've got your other instrument panel on this side and then some other bits and pieces okay so there's the flaps again from the opposite side got uh, they'll probably be the uh, intakes for the engine so there we go okay so there's the largest sprue that we've got to look at at the moment let's move that a bit off all right and then we've got the wing tip drop tanks okay pretty straightforward so these got really nice surface detail as well really clean and they're hollow so the only thing that I, I i guess you can't really get away from it every single sort of drop tank has to be in multiple parts it's just making sure that all these the edges glue nicely and you can replicate the panel lines going across so if you're very good with a very sharp scalpel you'll be able to clean those up uh, try to glue them as well fitting as you can in the beginning because if you sand too much you'll be sanding off a lot of the surface detail so just pay extra attention when you do that that's not just this model it's with any model okay so you got little bits and pieces okay so you got both halves of those tanks and then we've got some sort of that's probably part of the canopy probably a little bit of the frame and that's well supported there and again you can see there's absolutely no sprue really clean okay so there's the big bits actually i'll move those out of the way i'll put those over here all right, what have we got now? We've got some smaller packets. Now that looks like a, a crew ladder. We've got multiple bits in here. Okay, so we've got we've got wheels, and there's a loading uh, crew loading ladder. I think that hooks on that way actually. And then what do we got here? We've got a couple of panel things here that I don't know what they are. Okay, let's have a closer look at all these. All right, let's look at the ladder first. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Okay, so you can see the, the ladder here. You got the hooks that will hook onto the side of the fuselage near the canopy. And this will extend down along the side of the fuselage. And that's basically all the rungs of the ladder for the crew to enter the cockpit.
quite impressive how it's molded all in one piece. But have perfect alignment. Over here, uh, we've got, I'd say that's the nose cone. Okay, it's got some really nice surface detail. Let's pick it up with the reflections. Okay, from there we've got these panel-y looking things. We'll find out what these are all about a bit later. See how sharp these details are. And then we have two packs of wheels. Okay, so we'll just look at one. But you can see the wheel detail. Those really fine spokes. And then over here, you'll see that the main gear is weighted. And that's a nice touch too, because weighted wheels, quite often you'll have to go and buy yourself some resin type ones, which are quite expensive. But these are already been sculpted in. And it'll just give the, the whole model a real natural, like heavy look, the way it should be. Because otherwise, if they're perfectly round, it just looks like it's floating. Okay, so here you can see they're, how they're hollow, and they've got the locating pins, so you can get them positioned perfectly. Okay, so they're little bits. Let's go and look at the rest. All right, so I've got this part here, which has got some bits inside. So that's a sheet of decals. We'll look at that in a, in a moment. Let's open this up and see what we've got. This looks like seats. Okay, so we've got two sets of sprue here. So they should be identical for the flight seats. And then a very small sprue here of really tiny details. Don't know what they all are, but uh, we'll find out in the manual. Let's go a close up here. Get that focused. Get these out of the way. Okay, so you got all these little, I don't know what they are, little pointy bits. Okay, you'll notice that as I pulled it out, one's actually come off and it's actually inside the bag. So when you take out these parts, just be wary of that because it may not be because of the way I've pulled it out of the bag, they could have just um, uh, been crushed during transit and it's just come off. But it should be absolutely fine because it's a clean break. And then we've got the uh, undercarriage legs here. That'll be the main and under undercarriage, I think. And then we have the front, just like it has the lights on there as well. And then other little actuators and such. Okay, so that's that bit. And then let's have a look at the seats. I only look at one of these sprues because they're identical. So the seats here. Now they're quite small seats. They're quite an early jet aircraft. You've got the, uh, the control joystick. Really fine bits there, the sides of the seats. And then here we've got the cushion. A real natural sort of fabric type of look, like a cushion. It's not square and sharp edged. And then there's a few other details there as well. Okay, so that's it for all the gray parts. What that leaves us is the clear parts. So we've got the clear parts in this bag here. So this is gonna have the canopy, of course. And there we go. So it's got a bit of um, protective tape over it. I'm not gonna take that off. And I think that's really clever because quite often when you have clear parts, even in wearing a bag by itself like it was, when it rubs across during transit, you can get uh, scuff marks. So that keeps it super clear. So obviously when you're, you're seeing my fingers through it, it's going to look a little bit distorted because of the tape. But from what I can tell, it looks pretty clear. Now let's do a closer up zoom here. What can I focus on? Let's focus on here. Okay, so you got the front canopy here. Okay, the windscreen, you could call it. And then we have the main canopy because that's the highest part. You can see the tape that they've applied onto it. So it's a low tech tape. I might take that on, I'll keep it pristine. And then we've got a variety of lenses which will be for uh, the spotlights and such. Okay, nicely clean. All right, from there, it leaves us with the decals. Let's have a look at these. Pop 
Pop that over here. So we've got the protective film. So that's nice. Quite often the, the tissue paper they apply is just a regular tissue paper. This is actually wax paper and the wax side is actually down. So there's no chances of the decals getting stuck to the plastic bag. And they should be pristine when you get them. Okay, so there you go. You've got a whole variety of different um, uh, decals. You've got different countries. You've got US Air Force. You've got German. Uh, what are some of these others? Some of these I don't recognize, but we'll find out in the uh, manual soon. Now let's have a close up look at these. So you can see there is sort of a matte finish. You can barely see any film. You might be able to just see the film there. So nice thin decals are really nice. So these are actually printed by Great Wall. So you've got the Great Wall just down the bottom here. And then over here printed in China. So even though they're not cartographed, which everyone uh, accepts as being the very best, these do look very nice. Thin decals are much better than thick decals. Just means you need to be a little careful when you're handling them. But apart from that, take a bit of care. Thin decals will um, conform to the surface better. And then uh, they don't need a lot of clear to actually hide them. Because what you're trying to do is remove the uh, sheen. And it's already a low sheen anyway. Okay, so really nice and crisp printing. Lots and lots of stencils as you can see here. Okay, let's put it aside and we'll start looking at the paperwork. So, whoops, let's get that zoomed out. All right, so what do we got here? Let's get a bit more space, fit that all in, get that out of the way. All right, so we've got a, there's a, a revision. So just pay attention to the revision when you're going through the manual so you don't get uh, confused. Pop that over there. Over here we have a little bit of history of the aircraft. And then this is the legends uh, of all the parts, so you can understand what all the parts look like and how to find the numbered items. And then we have a paint chart on the back and some recommended tools. So they show you uh, GSI numbers. So these are the Mr. Color numbers. They've got the C's in front of them, so that's for the lacquer range. Uh, ammo MIG. And then there's description of the colors. Just so you can work it out and use different brands if you like. From there we've got this color decal guide so there's a u.s air force type livery okay so that's 1957 there's a 78 fighter interceptor wing and then we have a german scheme and then there's a italian so that's the italian markings okay so that's handy nice color nice and big and then we we'll get into the construction manual. So pretty simple there. You, you start with a step one, which is doing the cockpit, pretty standard for most aircraft. So all the seats are mounted inside the tub. We do the uh, instrument panel. We've got the, the sides of the cockpit. Uh, they appear to be decals. Then you have instrument panels going in and then your joysticks, fold that out. We'll get into part three, the landing gear. So you've got front landing gear, which is quite complicated. It's got the lenses there for the lights. And then we've got all the blocks here. Oh, so there you go. So that big chunky block part, which I didn't understand, is actually a nose weight, which is quite clever. So rather than using uh, metal washers or such, they've actually worked it out in injected plastic and that's easily glued on as well. You don't need any special glues, just regular cement. Got that going in. You've got the intakes and then the cockpit parts and the nose and then over step four we've got more of the uh, engine intakes for the side of the fuselage the fuselage halves are so the fuselage halves are glued within the uh, fuselage you got the little end part of the nozzle there and then you've got the horizontal stabilizers going on and actually the control surfaces there too for the elevators are separate same with the rudder there so i guess you could change that to a slight angle which will give it a bit more interest as well. Okay, so from there we've got step five, which is uh, the wings. We've got that uh, big undercarriage um, block there. We've got the two halves of the upper sections of the wings being glued on. And over here we've got, just need to pay attention to whether or not you want opening doors <coughs> or the closed ones. So there's certain areas that you need to cut to be able to have the doors opened. 
And then over here we've got the rest of the uh, assembly for there. So you've got um, the doors again. We've got some speed brakes. And then we get into the actual undercarriage wheels. So that's the main undercarriage. These are the weighted ones which I showed you before. They're mounted onto the wings. Final doors for the undercarriage. And then just make sure you got the alignment right here. Make sure that the flat section is on the bottom because it'll be a bit odd if you had that on the top. And then we're getting into the knee degrees towards the end. We've got the flaps. So the flaps are loose, or I should say deployed. And then the wing goes onto the fuselage. We've got the uh, wingtip tanks. They're getting assembled. A few of the smaller parts going onto the base of the fuselage. And then we've got the wingtip tanks, the ladder, and then the canopy going on. And that's it. And that's the complete the construction. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, open boxing of this, the Great Wall Hobby 148 scale.